Hello, my name is Dr. Kaufman. I am honored that Mr. Luft has asked me to share my work with you today. I am a composer. An author. A performer. Conductor, a concert presenter, a teacher. I am also a filmmaker, and you'll see many examples of that as we go. Here's a short 20 second animated film I call Inside the Mind of a Butterfly. You can find my work online at soundartist.com. You can also find me on my YouTube channel. Here's a short introductory film from my channel. Welcome to Sound Artists, where your imagination can come to feed and escape the chains of everyday reality. Choose a playlist. Each a portal to a different imaginative realm. From works of fine art, serious art for serious people. Movies for family-based audiences. The music and art for people of all ages. Powerful messages defending our natural environment. And tales of epic fantasy. <laughs> now, today I am here wearing my composer hat. Hmm, I think it's this one. As a composer, I have written chamber music which means music for various smaller ensembles for the classical concert stage. Here is an excerpt from my recent string quartet. This is the part where I paid homage to my teachers, Donald Erb and Karl Husa. You can look them up. They were quite famous in their day. Karl Husa won the Pulitzer Prize.
I've also composed plenty of symphonic music. Here's an example from my symphonic tone poem titled Mythagos. composed pieces for family audiences. These are works for people of all ages all at once. Here is an excerpt from my cinematic ballet which I composed for Sophia and I to perform. It's called Dancing Nighthawk. This is the part called Journeys. Thus began a terrific journey. They traveled across plains filled with buffalo and elk. They came to deep chasms with violent rivers flowing at the bottom and climbed down across rock bridges and up the far side. They went through forests of giant trees whose heads reached the sun and whose trunks were as big as Dancing Nighthawk's home. They emerged from the forest of giants. Across a small mesa, a mountain towered before them. I also scored a couple of independent films. Here's a bit from Little Courage with the director Veronica Saicedo.
also enjoy creating audio adventure albums. Here's a small bit from my epic fantasy series, Tales of the Ocean City. A quick flash of fiery light caught Harlut's eye. He saw a circlet of fire jade winding through the Princess Brineland's hair, which flowed about her neck and shoulders like a cloud of red and orange flames. A scarlet ribbon wound around her lithe form and down her back to meet an abundant sash. A skirt of loose swags flared about her legs in the wind. The princess rode Jigla's broad back with her arms held out and face upturned. She rapturously let the sun and occasional wisps of cloud create shadow shapes against her closed eyelids. Later, she would add them to the mural she was painting along the high recesses of Plathantah's godlike mountain cheek. Harlut cleared his mind of the mesmerizing vision, stood on Vespucian's back and prepared to utter his call and greeting. But Vespucian suddenly pulled up short in the air and mouthed a rasping bark. Her telepathic voice rang in his mind. Danger! Alarm! Enemy! Harlut instantly hunched over, gripped the mesh along her withers with one hand and craned his neck up and to the left. He followed Vespucian's stark gaze. Multicolored whorls dissipated in the thick glaze of morning light. A blur formed at the edge of his vision and separated into three jagged shapes growing in size. Blood-red streaks rent the air as three giant warriors riding massive red and black pariahs shot past, heading directly towards the princess. A mind-numbing keening sound followed by a venomous, sweet, acrid miasma life through Harlut's senses. All went dark. I've even done a couple of commercials, but today I'd like to focus on works I call environmental pieces or environmental music. These are pieces where I place live players in front of video featuring both art and natural images and have them play with a CD tape filled with hundreds of musical sounds and natural sounds especially. I have several of these works, but we'll focus on the one called Hudson Valley Music. This work brings the audience along on a journey from the Long Island Sound and up the Hudson River and into mythological space. There's a lot to it. Let's see what we can get to here today. Along the way here, you'll see clips from various performances with different complements of players. I redesigned the piece for different ensembles. I've done Hudson Valley music with soloists, various ensembles, all the way to full orchestra. Well, let's begin at the beginning. Hudson Valley music was commissioned by Quintet of the Americas a few years ago for their 30th season and was premiered on Earth Day. There is a place called the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. It is a library of hundreds of natural sounds based in Cornell University. As an alum of Cornell, I completed my doctorate in music composition there. I was able to go shopping for sounds, and they sent them all to me to use as I would, which I appreciated greatly. Now you can visit this lab yourself from my Hudson Valley music page on my website. As I mentioned, I've made many versions of this piece for many ensembles, what you'll see here, mostly, is from the most recent version of Hudson Valley Music, featuring world-famous flutist Robert Dick, and sometimes I'll be performing readings. This was my last concert before the pandemic at the National Opera House in Manhattan. Okay, now to it. 
I'll show you how I composed Hudson Valley music. First of all, I had these raw forms of the natural sounds I used. They were mile-long tracks with some fellow out in the woods with a mic taking uh, recordings of the natural sounds and creatures. Like this super nerd recording a cricket. 25.2 degrees, that's recorded a 20 September in room and light. That's collected 12 September number 2, Raleigh. LNS catalog number 130618. Ha! My first task then was to choose the sounds I wanted from these tracks and cut them out and place them into what I called my cleaning station. I use a program called Sound Soap to rid them of extra unwanted noise and make the sounds usable to compose with. <laughs> Whoa, that's a little wild, all of them at once. Here's a few of my favorite sounds which I used in the composition of Hudson Valley music. The tree cricket. Here are some birds. The wolf cries. Bear huffs. Beluga whales. Then I took these sounds and brought them into the project. I use a program called Logic. Think of it as a giant loom where I can weave and sculpt these sounds and compose with them. Here are a couple of examples of doing this. As I mentioned before, Hudson Valley Music tells a story. The first movement is called Ocean and uses ocean-based sounds. By the way, I also used sounds from my film music and sound effect libraries. When I introduced the piece, I told the audience to get into their dugout canoes. This is a way of placing the audience inside the experience. So at the beginning of the piece is the sounds of ocean water and oars in the water. Then a humpback whale begins to sing, and this is where the musicians begin to play. Uh, the clicking sounds are dolphins.
Now, in music composition, there is a technique called stretto. This is where instruments will share a musical pattern one after the other. I use that technique in ocean with the sounds of beluga, recorded underwater, which you heard a second ago. They sound like alien starships and like whales talking to us. Perhaps they're asking us to stop polluting their ocean. Now here's a bit from Forest. this without the live players, so you can hear my tape composing, which features string bass, piano, marimba, and instruments made from natural sounds. The bear sounds to me like he is crying out to us to hear him and help him to take care of our environment. You can hear how the tone quality of the chords change from a kind of minor to major when the calmer forest images begin and the bird sounds return. I also enjoy the humor in the wild turkey sounds. The next movement is called Nocturne, which means nighttime. So the, the composition is created from the sounds of nighttime creatures. You'll hear coyote yip inflected wolf song, bats, wind, bear, rattlesnake, red winged blackbird, and moose, and acts as a backdrop for the flute music and readings. Also, you'll hear me read the words of the great environmentalist. John Muir. When one is alone at night in the depths of these woods, the stillness is at once awful and sublime. 
every leaf seems to speak. the moon along the sky sails with her happy destiny. Oft is she hid from the mortal eye or dimly seen. But when the clouds asunder fly, how bright her mane. I believe a leaf of grass is no less than the journey work of the stars. <laughs> The next movement delivers a powerful message about environmental protection. It is called Industrial Storm. In this one, I create an instrument by sampling the sounds of metal plates. And I created the music from sounds of pile drivers and percussion and maxed out brass and other sounds. One cool thing is I performed as an instrument one of my movie music programs. It's the sounds of armor and sword fighting. I played it like a big percussion instrument. I also created a kind of monster out of the pile drivers. I used the ambient sounds from my film library and created a roar from the sounds of elephant, elk screams, and percussion. You'll hear this whole movement all put together in a second. The last movement is largely peaceful and beatific. It is titled, And the Earth is Our Spiritual House. It reprises the main characters and ends with dolphin and hawk cries, and a final cadence, which is my version here of how a Beethoven symphony might end. Now I'll play the movie from Industrial Storm to the end. You can find the entire film and many others on my YouTube channel, Sound Artist. Thanks for listening. of ravaging commercialism seem to have a perfect contempt for nature and instead of lifting their eyes to the god of the mountains lift them to the almighty dollar the human dress is forged iron the human form a fiery forge the human face a furnace sealed the human heart its hungry gorge
snow is melting into music. Humankind has not woven the web of life. We are but one thread within it. Whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. All things are bound together. All things connect. All the wild world is beautiful, and it matters but little where we go. To highlands or lowlands, woods or plains, on the sea or land or down among the crystals of waves, or high in a balloon in the sky. Through all the climates, hot or cold, storms and calms, everywhere and always, we are in God's eternal beauty and love. And the earth is our spiritual house. show is eternal. It is always sunrise somewhere. The dew is never all dried at once. A shower is forever falling, vapor ever rising. Eternal sunrise, eternal sunset, eternal dawn and gloaming. On seas and continents and islands, each in its turn as the round earth rolls. 